I have a pull request open. I, I hope we can discuss it uh, here. Yeah. It, um, it's this one. Yeah. Uh, let's go. Uh, next package is 18. Oh, well, I guess it's here. 186314. Yeah. It's All right. Uh, a control for system D representation. I think we can start with the second issue here. So this is uh, the main problem by Graham. Okay. Um, and the question is how can we define mm. the part of the system D template here? It's <laughs> yeah. I run mm. it's, it's about the template system of system D, and then the special case here. We have um, he, here he wants to make an instance called foo at example. Mm -hmm. And what we expect is that foo at example now is, yeah. a, is an instance of foo at. Yeah. But in yeah. system D, ne, in NixOS, what we do here is defining a new service mm -hmm. which replaces the template. Yeah. And so th the PR here attempts to fix that? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, sh should we should just take a quick look at the peer, what it does? Uh, maybe see, uh, make it, give a quick review. Yes, yeah, it's okay. Great. Is this uh, is this your peer yes, or? Ah, I see. Is your CK three D? Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. We can we can take a look here. Um, so well, we can't go into like super details here, but we can we can it's take a not, quick it's look. It's too complex. Okay. So we have. Um, I introduced a new option in system system D lib. Okay. Uh, representation. Oh, here, 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 here we are. So the first one it's called representation. The question is: Is, re is representation a right name? The right but name. So this is defines how unit is represented for system D as drop in if not exists. No unit files. This is the current behavior in line uh, 57. So drop in mm -hmm. if not exists is how how our generator works currently. Yeah, yeah. Um, as drop in if not exists, and then as drop in creates a unit file named over a milliliter for blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so this uh, so this is two options. Just like, oh, nice. We can write. So rec recently, uh, I guess you've noticed this. The Markdown documentation uh, is now available in, in Nexus modules. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I see here already using the the literals. Um, let's le let's look at where it's used here. This is now an example how you can use it. I used it. Yeah. I extended it um, the demo. And then ah, the top. here you add a single variable to all the units. Yes. So it's right in in system in the system decode for next packages we have right we have a lot of different unit types so we have like timers we have paths we have mounts we have services and all of those get mapped to like a unit representation like uh, mm -hmm. which is unit and there's also docs for this in system d of course um, system d dot unit uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, really cool thing about System D, if you haven't known about it already, System D dot directives is a man page, which is an index for all the all the System D terms. So Thank like, you. Oh that's that's yeah. that's very useful, honestly. So we have like all all the options here. Uh, we have it goes like not not just options. There's also like all the individual commands and stuff. I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Just Na names, uh, files as name uh, as well. Oh. So yeah, th that's very useful. Um, but yeah, we, we have all these different ser uh, types of units uh, in System D. They all get mapped to unit. Um, and, and all of them are now extended. This is what I do yes. with the I extend all the types, unit types. All right. And then this is the code that takes the units. Yes, this is a generator for the unit files. Mm -hmm. And the first implementation does the magic to distinguish between overriding or not overriding. It says mm -hmm. 194, if it exists, no, sorry, um, in the first if, it's 199, the new 199, 199. This exists if file exists, then do an override, no, not mm -hmm. a drop in file. It's we have to distinguish drop-in is the term system D uses 
to do overrides. I see. And we call the file afterwards uh, overrides, but it's a drop-in file. Okay. So it's a point of view. Uh, so it check. Uh, so it does here for each. Uh, for, each um, for each of the units, it goes over them. It filters them by the old way of doing it. So yeah. this. So this code only runs for the old ones. Yes. Um, and down here, additional code for only the new ones. Yes. I see. And so this ju then just creates an override. Um, does it also get uh, get rid of like the 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 kind of in uh, p the, the prefix of the of the uh, system D unit? Like you have some argument at the unit dot service or something. This is um, still. Uh, um, this will exist. It, it's part of the FN of the function. Mm -hmm. um, this contains the full name of your service or unit. Okay. D is the folder. Mm. Creates a drop. -in. Okay. Yeah. Um, so immediately, I I can see something that I like to do with with Nexus options, uh, which are enumerations. So here we have an enumeration, and in, in Nexus, it's I feel like it's very easy to kind of miss. Uh, to miss uh, cases uh, from enum enumerations when you add new ones. I feel like a really, really neat pattern for this is when, uh, let's open the next file here, default.next. So let's say we have some some value here, let's say enum value. Then we have, uh, let's say we have just, uh, let's say we have A. <laughs> and there's multiple values, you can pick A, B, or C. And then how to how to handle that value? I, I really like the pattern of creating an attribute set with all the options. So you say what should be the result for a, and you give here okay a. In that case we have null. In b it should be uh, I don't know, ten, and in case of c it should be twenty. And then to actually get the value, you just index this by the by the value it is. And so this way you kind of have a direct mapping of here what uh, what enum value corresponds to which result type um, and it's kind of uh, well I guess you could still like mes miss a new value and then you'd get an error if you were to index this mm -hmm. uh, but that's uh, so compared to to this here it works a bit better uh, so in this PR we see here that all the units get filtered by the specific unit type you have um, and here you don't do any filtering, you just map it directly. And so when you have a new unit type, you, you'd get an error. Um, yeah, and so we could evaluate this. Oh, NE, by the way, alias NE, that's just next instantiate eval, is a very easy way to evaluate the next file. Um, yeah, so this gives null. Uh, but in, in this case, um, we have a list, not just a single value. So we have a um, list of enums. Let's say we have uh, so different values. We have an A. Uh, let's say we also have a B and we also have a C. Um, you, we want to handle each of, each of these separately. Maybe map them to individual entries or, or do something else with them. Maybe map them to a script. Uh, combine them, I guess. Like these are. I mean, in in your case, these aren't just simple values. These are actually like uh, attributes. Uh, so these might be, we have an attribute which has uh, name equals a, or, or let's say type equals a, mm. and these have some additional attributes here, so value equals something, let's say. Let's also make it a, a, a type equals b, give this also some value. I think you have to start speaking louder because... All right. <laughs> Yeah, um, so uh, right now we have a list of enums. We might want to map over those or like kind of create a single script that can handle all of them together. And I think a really good function in Nix packages to do this is uh, the partition function. Um, I'm quickly going to show you how, the, how this works here. Uh, we can say result equals lib.partition. Uh, now partition takes a, a function that distinguishes two types of, of functions here, uh, of, of values here. So we, we get the value in here, so the, the final argument will be the list of enums. Um, and now in here we can have a function that acts on the individual values. So we can say here, if you get a value, 
address or let's say value. Uh, well, actually, value is confusing. Let's pick address. And uh, let, then let's say address dot type equals equals a. So this is a Boolean condition. Uh, if it's true, it separates them in in one way. If it's false, it separates them in another. Uh, let's see what the result of this actually is. I'm going to evaluate this uh, on the command line here. It's an error because I don't have lib defined. Fair enough. We're going to import this here. The next package is lib. Evaluate it again. Oh, there it is. Um, so as you can see, we have uh, for one a right and for one a wrong attribute name in here. And these all contain a list of all the values that satisfied or not didn't satisfy the predicate. Um, and so this is this is good in this case. We, we only have like two types here. But what if we add another one? Like let's say we have also a, a C and we want to distinguish this as well. Um, then this would be a bit too limited. Lib.partition can only have two results really. Uh, and the really kind of extension of that, uh, let's add a result prime here. Uh, the result of the kind of extended version of that is group by. Uh, so group by is kind of like partition, but it's it's for many of them. You you don't give a boolean result, but a, a string result really. So instead of making this a function uh, boolean function here, we can just say address dot type uh, again list of enums. And now when we evaluate this, we get. Uh, well, it's evaluated uh, um, as JSON and then do like some JQ so we can see it a bit better, but then it's too much. Let's try it again. Yeah, this. So now it actually creates an attribute set. Well, this is JSON, but it's an attribute set in Nix that contains for each of the value, all the, for each of the attributes, the values that satisfy that, that predicate here. Um, Yes, yeah, so we, we've only, I guess this is a bit confusing because we only have a single value of each of those. But we can also like and add another A here, some other value. Evaluate this again. So we have two A's, one B and one C. And we can see that all of those get uh, created together in A. Um, and from that, something very useful, like you've done a a group by now, like what do you do with this result? In most cases, you don't re even need this type here anymore. Like you, you have some associated data, the, this value here. You only really care about that and you want to maybe create some other result from that. It's a very common pattern I see is to add a map address after that. So you map address takes, uh, is a takes a function, takes two arguments. The first is the name of each attribute, the second the value of each attribute. That's again confusing because we have a value attribute in the attributes already. So let's call it address. Now let's just extract the value of each of those attributes. Let's return address.value. Um, yeah, and so when we evaluate this, we get an error because, um, where did I mess something up? Address.value, lib.group by. Oh, right, so this isn't the actual address. We have each attribute has a list of, of these entries. And so we need to, I guess we need to do something. Let's concatenate them or something. Let's let's do that. Let's do lib.concat, um, concat sep, concat string sep. Yes, nice, thanks. Uh, and make this a bit less confusing. This is values. Here also values or actually address sounds like a better name. All right, let's try. Oh yes. All right, let's use concat map string set. These functions keep getting worse. Uh, we have atcher and atcher dot uh, value. All right. And um, it still doesn't work because, because, concat <laughs> map string sep. Honestly, I am not sure. Uh, let's, let's format this a bit better. I can barely read the line anymore. Uh, we've grouped by, I mean, let's, let's, okay, we have, we have a problem. We, we can't figure this out. Let's, let's add some traces here or something. 
there's a in um, there's a, a small debug library in Next packages. In my I think it was actually added by by Prof Patch here. Um, the the lib.debug section. It's in my opinion it's a bit hard to use, but uh, it's sometimes useful. Um, so let's try to print the, the values in here. See if if they have uh, if we get any more info from that. You could use the new debugger as well. I actually can't because I'm using <laughs> the old not non flake enabled Nix. Uh, well, I, it is enabled, but <laughs> ma maybe let's try this as well later. Um, the lib dot debug. Uh, we have I think trace sec. We can try that. Let's let's try trace sec. Uh, trace sec is takes a value. It prints that value, the the fully evaluated value, and then returns the second argument of the function. So let's try to print address here. Ah, uh, trace val sec. You can just wrap it around something. Ah, doesn't need the second argument. Yeah, although in this case we might not want to separate it. But, but yeah, let's let's do this afterwards. Uh, so we have this this function here. Uh, first argument is this. We want to print this. And the second one is this one. We want to return this from the function. Uh, let's try what happens if we do this. Um, okay, it didn't uh, it didn't do it because we're lazy in Nix. Let's add the strict. All right, here we have something. Um, that all looks uh, pretty good to me. <laughs> I think I know the problem, but uh, let's also take a look at trace val. What does strict exactly do? Uh, strict, yeah. Um, so next instantiate, well, next instantiate by itself uh, creates, uh, tries to instantiate a derivation. So it evaluates next code, tries to create the derivation from that. Um, if you add dash dash eval, it doesn't care about creating a derivation from that. It only does an evaluation. Uh, but as we can see here, it, it returns these angle brackets and code, uh, which mean it's it's a thunk in, in lazy languages. It's just not evaluated yet. And um, so we can't really see what the result is here. And also the all the traces we put in there aren't aren't evaluated because Nix doesn't get even to those parts. Um, and so strict makes it strict in that it tries to evaluate the entire result. So it resolves all those thunks and evaluates them fully. And this is why we can see uh, the, all the results with strict. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm not just realizing that actually it works, it works just fine. I'm not sure what the problem was earlier. Oh, actually, I know the problem now. We didn't add strict. So there's this thing where uh, if we try to serialize a JSON value, uh, but we don't add strict, then uh, it's going to complain. Because we try to serialize a function application which does, isn't a thing in JSON. So, yeah, if you want to use dash dash JSON, also use strict. Good idea. Is that still yeah. a thing in the new mix? Uh, well, this is the old command. Uh, let's yeah, let's go to the newer Nix command. So, uh, <laughs> oh, here I'm going to struggle a bit. I think. Uh, REPL, I think like, REPL has a load flake now. Yeah, maybe we can, well, let's, let's create a flake. Do we need flake to do the new Nix? No, no. Can just Nix eval. Just Nix eval, F, I think. Okay, yeah, nice. It doesn't need strict anymore. Guess it's strict by default. Uh, does it still have a JSON flag? Yes, it does. Awesome. So yeah, so. Uh, you mean how to how to make it non-strict? Yeah, like I think that's a current issue in the CLI. I don't think there's a like no strict. Make sense. I, there is an issue on this. Depends on what you're trying to evaluate. Sometimes you don't want it strict. I mean, when you say like evaluate. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so we, we can look at an, so an example of this where it's, where it's kind of bad. Um, so let's say we might want to, uh, like we haven't looked at any derivations here yet, but what if we, what if we do? Yeah. Um, so let's import very impurely here for now. It's very quick and easy. Let's import the next packages. Let's also reorder this a bit. Let's use packages.lib. And then we can also use uh, inherit. Uh, Let's make it this and inherit packages. Uh, same thing. 
All right, uh, now let's try just to say, I don't know, packages.hello, let's just return that. Um, and now if we, so in the old CLI, uh, nix instantiate default.nix, this will return a derivation. So, well, their derivation path, it, I think it does some weird string outputting thing here, but really it's a, it's a derivation here, yeah. Um, by the way, derivations, they, let's look at it in next REPL. Uh, next REPL, let's import this file. F equals import default.nix. Um, so next REPL also does something slightly special here. It prints the derivation with like these, these angle brackets and the derivation of the DRV path. This is a bit confusing because actually this is, is at terms. It's actually an attribute set. Those dot uh, is address. Yes. Um, so um, we can kind of get around this. It's a bit hacky, but if we use, if we override the type, then it's gonna, I don't know, foo. Oh, <laughs> is it uh, this? Yeah, it's this. Okay. Not an underscore and type, and then we can actually see the, the full uh, value of the derivation. It's so only next REPL does here if the type is, I think it's derivation, derivation. Yeah, then it then it prints it in this special way. That's a next REPL thing. Um, it might be a bit confusing. Um, but yeah, so if you want to see all the properties, uh, overwrite the type with like empty for now. Uh, hopefully that's going to be fixed in next REPL at some point. And so what it, what it really does is it looks at the DRV path attribute here. DRV path. Um, right, derivations have DRV path and out path and for all the ad other outputs as well. Um, but yeah, that's just the next REPL thing. Um, where were we? I kind of forgot here. Yeah, we made that work. Uh, we looked at packages. No oh yeah, the strict thing, yeah. So next instantiate default.next. We don't have to use default.next because it's the default. That's where the name comes from. Um, so default on next, uh, if we here add the strict flag, I think, yeah, that that's actually also fine. Yeah, for eval, I think strict doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, oh, that might be true. Let's let's like look at it. So eval, okay, eval eval does actually the evaluation. It doesn't uh, create the derivation or try to result in a derivation. Uh, let's add strict. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. we have the problem here. So, so in this case, we can actually see that there's use cases where we don't want a strict evaluation because th there, that's a bit weird in next packages, but there's some derivations in next packages that don't evaluate. When you try to evaluate them, they, they break. Honestly, that's a bug. Someone should fix them, but nobody did. I think it's honestly this, this error here. Oh, no, that's a different one, but <laughs> something is always broken in next packages if you, if you look hard enough. And so... Uh, in this case, it's something that's broken in all of this crap here. Uh, some derivation, we have repeated a lot of unevaluated things. We don't need to evaluate all of those to, to get to the result. We can, we can get to like uh, your V path, just like that, um, without evaluating all of that. Um, and so in the new REPL, I think if you try this, uh, like just normal eval, it's going to fail. And because there's no lazy flag at the moment, we, we can't really do that. Um, is, there an, is there a workaround? So I you have to use DRV path. Ah, you have to use, so, uh, DRV path, how does it? Oh yeah, okay, that works, nice. So DRV path or I guess out path or whatever you need from, from the derivation. All right, um, okay, let's, let's backtrack a little bit here. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the peer here, let's... <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But yeah, here, what we could do instead, um, let me quickly copy this number. Let me go to next packages tree. I have the, the GitHub CLI installed, so... Well, this wouldn't be needed if I cloned it correctly. I didn't. Uh, the, the R argument there. But you can really easily check out pull requests uh, this way. And also, if, if you're a, a committer, you can also uh, add commits to the PR this way very easily. So now we are on the PR. We, uh, we can look at the commit history here. Um, let's look at the, the file that we that was changed here, the systemd lib. Uh, let's go into Nexus lib systemd lib. 
Um, uh, where is it? How long is this file? Ooh. And S and S drop-in. Search for S drop in. Oh, S. Oh, oh yeah, S drop in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna do a really quick refactoring here. What we could do. Um, I haven't given too much thought whether it's. I think it's a good idea. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so we have all these units. Uh, let's kind of start off with that. We want to do the the group by. So we do lip dot group by. We partition those. Let's say unit unit dot. Um, representation. Um, all right, so now we have a, a, an attribute set where each attribute maps to a list of units. Uh, now let's try to well, map address. Mm. Well, in the end, we need to concatenate all of them together uh, in a in a big uh, big script. Let's try. Maybe let's use map address to list. So map address to list takes attribute set uh, and the second argument that would be here uh, and then for each attribute name and value pair uh, it calls a function here we have name we have a value and it can create a value from that um, so in here we let's do let's do Good question. What should we do here? <laughs> so, but what we do is we, we do a map address to list already in, in one line uh, afterwards. Ah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's all right. For now, we, we, we still have this uh, from attribute name to. Yeah, actually, maybe. Can't be here. Just say I want. Oh. Yeah, after the group by, can't you just do dot as drop in? Yeah. It can't exist. Ah, yeah. Uh, so I guess I guess yeah, like this. So we take all of that. Oh, yeah. And then instead and of doing the filter again below, you can just drop in uh, like this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, we want to reuse the partition or the group by. Yeah. Because there's another one below. But also we want to use like all of these scripts. We want to create a script for all of them and then concatenate them together. Uh, so we don't want to like. So we could do this. So, like, uh, well, this doesn't do a whole lot right now. But we could do something like this uh, as drop in. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is, yeah, I think, I think it is actually a, a map address to list, because we don't really care about the name there anymore, as far as I can see. Yeah. Name value. Well, it's values. Um, let's end and tape indent this a little bit. The values are the units. What? The, the values are the units, uh, the sorted units. No, mm -hmm. so this are the... Oh, no. Yeah, so, so these values... Let's, the let's maybe add... Honestly, I'd really like some types here. Okay. <laughs> name, uh, value, let's add some, like, ad hoc type annotations here. So values, that's... Um, we have a list of units, really. Units. units, but only uh, uh, only the ones for the specific category. Yeah, for this name, yeah. but only for a specific name. Yeah. Uh, and I guess yeah, the name here, the name here is kind of the, the the important thing to to map over that. So we can say, oh yeah, okay, that works. So <coughs> this is the this is where we get the enum mapping thing back. I think so. We have here s drop in. And then here we have something. Let's add null for now, so it evaluates. Um, as drop in and as drop in if not, uh, drop in if uh, auto completion. Not for now. All right. So we can create this this kind of attribute set here, but not actually use all the values here. But we just access by the val by the name here. Mm -hmm. So this here we can also add. This is either as drop in. That's what the group by does, or it's as drop-in if not exists. Yeah, and so we, we only need to really define these values here, and we can we can explicitly like say what the script will be for each of those enum variants. Uh, but then here we still need to do map over the values. But in this code, we can be sure that all of the values are 
as drop-ins. So here we can do the lib dot uh, so values list. Well, well, we can do something like map address to list again. We have a map address to list. Is that right? Oh. Honestly, I think just concat map map strings set. These functions need to rename. Oh my god. We have a name, we have a we actually don't have a, a name, we just have a value. That's the value of the unit. Uh, afterwards we can do values here. So we take all the all the units, we map them to some script. Let's add the script in here. Mm -hmm. And now we can use the value here as uh, or yeah, let's see what is there. Uh, unit uh, oh I that's just the unit name mm -hmm. of address mm -hmm. to list <laughs> unit yeah okay well, that looks good so you recommend now to um, to iterate over the units and generate a bash script which has um, Yes, yeah, so, 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 honestly, you should do some refactoring here if, if you want to use this <laughs> code, yes. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's, it's essentially taking all the units, grouping them by their type, and then for each type generating the, the script you want for mm -hmm. that type. Okay. And so that's kind of like a, a functional pipeline where you, you start with the, the whole list, you, you group that, you do something else with that, so like one step after the next. Um, and I think that's uh, it's kind of much more functional and clearer and, and less error prone if you uh, instead of mm -hmm. uh, creating a big uh, like like filtering by the type and then generating the script from that. Um, honestly, in this case, it looks fairly complicated right now. Um, I, I feel like it's going to be better if you do a bit of refactoring and, and put put it like in a Latin at the beginning, maybe. Um, but yeah, it could be used like this uh, as a suggestion. Um, yeah, um, does, does anybody have a question about the things we talked about? Like, feel free, anything on any level or... Quick rookie one then. Yeah. So the functions, I remember I asked at one point about uh, the functions, for example, I'll just pick one for example, like uh, filter atras um, and all these functions that there's no easy way to know what each of the parameters are for them. Yeah, is yeah. There, there is right. um, there is a well the next package is manual. Let's take a look at that. Uh, I think it should some some somewhere be able to find it on the website. Right. But I do think there is this section here, the functions reference, which does uh, I think it does describe most of the functions. So chapter five functions reference. Um, and these are to a big degree automatically generated and uh, yeah. uh, so next package is library functions so we can see lib.asserts and they have some associated type descriptions here. It's kind of the, the Haskell description of types uh, because next doesn't have built-in types. Um, let's see here we could for example look at filter address and it actually does have some, some oh, nice. a type associated with it. Also where it is uh, Oh, and even even the individual arguments, uh, what they what they do, uh, uh, that's that's pretty good. Um, there is, however, also if you look at the the actual lib code in next packages, like lib, um, let's pick address sets. So this is where all the address set specific functions are defined. We can see this up here. Inherit from built-ins, adder names, list to address, has address, is adder, and so on. And these aren't documented with, with documentation in here. I'm not sure if they could also be like, I could maybe even just like go in here and do like an inherit uh, built-ins again and add some docs here, some docs. Uh, I'd have to test whether that actually works, but currently it doesn't exist here. And so these built-ins, they you can find them in here. So we have atcher names, for example. If I search for atcher names, I got no results, that, that surprises me. Um, I think these are might be documented in the next manual. Uh, next manual, let's, let's see, uh, manual nix. You can also get the doc from the repo. So the oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's. Doc. 
let's also look at that. Um, yeah, the, the next manual looks pretty cool. You can actually search for stuff in their separate separate pages now. Uh, this didn't exist like a year ago or so. Um, so built-in functions, it is here. And here we have add your names and all of the others. Um, yeah, but let's look at the, the doc command in the yeah. next REPL as well. I wish that worked for lib, like next package. Oh lib, yeah, that, that, would, that would be nice. <laughs> So yeah, in, in next REPL, uh, you can say doc and then built-ins dot add your names. And then you get the doc from from yeah. Nix itself. Yeah, nice. Uh, right, unfortunately, only for, only for yeah, not for lib, not so uh, that, nice. that would be nice. Um, yes. Uh, I wouldn't have oh. to open a browser. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we might actually also try uh, this really quick. I think I know how to render these document this documentation automatically. Um, so in next packages, I believe that's next released on next or something like this. Uh, that's actually not the right thing. Doc. I think it's just doc. Yeah. So next build doc in next packages. Very easy to build the the documentation. <laughs> we can see some 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 strict evaluation happening here. There is a whole bunch of deprecated functions in lib. Which, which it also evaluates in, in, in this place here. Uh, I actually don't want to like overload uh, the, the hotspot here that was gracefully provided. Yeah, so let's, it's, let's not uh, it's fine, it's from the wall. All right, it's fine, let's go. <laughs> oh, and it's actually, I already, it was too late anyways. Mm -hmm. so that's fine. Um, yes. Although we are downloading JDK now. Uh, that's, okay. That might be a problem. Let's, let's let this run in the background. Um, yeah, next rebel. Oh, the the debugger. We we can maybe also take a look at that. Honestly, I never used the debugger before, so so that will be exciting. Um, let's see. What if we let's say we introduce a random failure in here? Like, uh, so what do we do here? Packages dot hello. Let's change this back to result to this complicated function here, and let's say uh, delete, one of the delete one of the values. So this works right now. Um, how do we delete one of the values? Yeah, Let's say, uh, like here. Yeah. All right. Comment down the value. Okay. Yeah. That fails. Uh, let's see if the debugger works. Uh, so we do nix eval f default of nix. This still fails. Yes. So dash dash debugger. Oh my! It actually works. Amazing. So you have to uh, skip this one because it's. Ah. Alright, wait, let's let's look at the available commands. We have valued and print expression bind, we have uh oh, these are fairly normal ones. Oh here debug mode commands. Env. Nice. Prints all the environment variables. Or not the environment variables. The variables of next in scope. We have uh column BT, backtrace, that's nice. Uh, I don't like them when they're too long requires me scrolling up all the way but for now that's fine uh, we have uh, current trace oh oh current trace yes uh, but yeah uh, so you said skipping this one with continue continue C. or s uh, C C go until the end of experiment or built in stop break well it should is that? that oh. was your error. Ah, <laughs> I see, I see. Okay, that's nice. Uh, so so I guess C is used for just, like, okay, l l let's trace back. Why do we want to use C here? Um, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Next package overlays what n was not found. Ah, yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> we can also quickly mention this. Uh, we can see here the error points at the, the angle brackets here. Which use the the Nix path environment variable, but uh, Nix eval I think uses the the pure evaluation by default, and so it doesn't have access to that. Um, or actually, no. In this case, it's just that it couldn't find it. Does it? Does it? Does it have access? Your Nix was found. Yeah, I guess in this case. Yes, I think to point. I think the next person is going to ignore these by default because it's inside the try statement. 
the from the oh, dependency. I see. I see. So I guess it is still impure by default the next REPL. Uh, because yeah. it could even evaluate this this angle brackets. Can we also add pure eval, I guess? No, that that still works. Never never mind then. But yeah, let's let's continue here. So this is apparently not our error. It will be fixed in the future. Uh, this is our error now. Um, and yeah, that looks pretty good. It points to the value here. But uh, now, yeah, like why why is the value missing here? Uh, I guess we can now print atr here. Nice. Yeah, the value is indeed missing. So that, that's pretty cool. I've never used this before. Um, all right. Is there any other command we missed? change to another trace in the stack. Well, that sounds pretty cool. So let's, let's quickly try this. So these are all the functions we went through. Let's maybe go to this one. So this is trace number three. Uh, the command to change it is st3. All right, and we can see all the functions as well. Um, and now we can paint print list. Yeah, that pretty good. Oh yeah, colon colon p for for strict evaluation in the next REPL. Um, and yeah, the the this is all also in up here. Uh, doc, we also looked at that uh, log. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, are there any questions about next REPL perhaps, or anything we just looked at? No, that's also fine. Um, okay. So we looked at the docs here. You have a build running. I have a build running, yeah, and it finished. Nice. Um, let's uh, let's maybe take a look at this. Uh, so right, the manual, if we build this, we get a derivation by default linked to the result. Uh, usually what I do is open Firefox directly, like this. Uh, there's the, the manual HTML page in there. So we can we can find this in here. Uh, I don't think there's oh ah uh, yeah there's a bunch of things in here but that's good. Firefox result locally loading the docs in here. Let's go to the functions reference. The CSS is a bit mixed up, messed up here but it's fine. And so let's take a look again. What did we document here? We tried to add some docs to attribute names. I hope this is in the right format. Atri names, uh, it didn't work. There's no atri names in there. <laughs> Quick test, let me copy this entire thing up here. Let me rebuild the docs. Hopefully they don't take too long. Yes. Oh, but, uh, but there is also, if you actually develop docs, you, there's a more convenient thing to do. Um, there is, in the doc directory for next packages, there's makefile. So you can actually, I think, oh, there's even a shell.next file. So we can do like a um, next shell in here. Get into an environment, get into an environment where we can build the docs using uh, hopefully just make yeah looks good that's much more convenient than always waiting on the next build uh, but let's see do we get a an actual result here with at your names no we don't okay something something doesn't work there ah uh, that's the make build uh, the the next build that was ah, finished and so the, the result points there yeah um yeah, but I, I guess I guess you you could also talk to Valentin if you want to update the documentation. Uh, he, he's the guy for that. Um, you can just uh, not use the in rate. Uh, what? Just do at trains equals between dot at trains. Maybe. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite get that. Built in dot something. Uh, you, instead of doing in rate between that trains. Oh. Doing at names I see. Dot at names. Yeah, that because might be maybe it. Maybe just detecting if there is an equal or something. Yeah, I think the parser for these inline docs are is not super sophisticated. It just barely works. Um, let's make sure the formatting is right here. Remove this. 
attronames to pilsons dot attronames. All right, let's try this again. This time with make. Make. Just those next build. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come. <laughs> oh, does it do a next build only for part? I, there's there's like make rules here. Like like like. All right. Yeah, never, never, never mind. Uh, well, <laughs> let's, let's let's try. We uh, we went through the effort of, of doing that already. Oh, I, but no, this looks like this does look like make rules, maybe. Seems to rebuild a whole lot though, even though I only changed one line. Mm -hmm. um, but also, what are even the targets here? Uh, is it manual.xml? Firefox manual.xml? No. It's an XML file. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's an XML file. XML. Uh, HTML? Oh, doc support result. OK, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Firefox doc support result. Um, and then. Uh, Honestly, no. This doesn't look like it. Yeah, actually, never mind. Let's let's just do an <laughs> another rebuild. Uh, that's fine. Oh, but this was actually pretty fast. Nice result. Let's see. Uh, at your names. At your names. No. Okay. I, I, I at this point, I'm not sure what's <laughs> going on. Anyways, um, we have like 15 more minutes. Uh, does anybody have like another issue or PR they want to uh, ta have taken a look at or any other question? Open to anything or also advanced questions if, if that's your thing. How do you find the trace module? <laughs> ah, yeah, as the author, you might want, would like to know. Uh, let's look at that. So we have uh, the debug the debug thing in here. It has some, some docs up here. That's, that's nice, which kind of gives an overview. So we have uh, built-ins uh, or lib.debug.trace. We have trace val likes. These don't take two arguments, but only one, uh, printing it and returning it at the same time. We have the sec-like types. These take two arguments. Uh, yes. And then the, the function ending ones. Uh, so that takes a function and an argument. I think it prints the argument and then passes it to the function and it returns the function argument. Um, no, I'll, I'll way around. It applies the function to the argument before tracing it. Because sometimes it just uh, like quickly do like a subset of I the trace bit. Because I see. show the subset of the thing. Or All right. Uh, well, well, uh, I guess let's let's try it. Um, and then but it's yeah. basically a matrix of all the combinations. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, trace if also exists. Those are old. Trace if is old. I see. So this one is is there trace val fn. I um, think that was the first one that already existed. Oh, and, and then, then added more stuff. yeah, and then of course there's also the the sec n ones. These so actually it's it's. <laughs> <laughs> It's there. There's quite a few, and actually, honestly, this one is kind of the most useful because it it prints it. I think now with new lines. <laughs> Let's quickly try it. Oh, because yeah, okay. But yeah, yeah. So something you could change. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's try it really quick though. Um, let's do trace uh, sec. So well, first trace sec. Uh, we we should really fix this, but currently trace sec. Uh, if you do like a dot b dot c and and might have like some super nested structure, it's really hard to see what the values really are. Um, honestly, we can probably just use like the types set. This is fairly fairly. Yeah, like, uh, look at this. This you like have no no idea what it actually prints here. And so, uh, due to the implementation of tracesec, it doesn't add any new lines here. But the tracesec n one does add new lines. Um, it takes an additional argument, though. That's the, the recursion depth. And so if we just start with 0, it just prints a, like, essentially nothing. Uh, but the more recursion we add here, the better the, the trace, or the more in-depth the trace gets. 
and so we can go like really in depth here like uh, three yeah and so so this is really nice if you need to print like a complicated value um, underneath this trace sec n um, you can use this or you can use the underneath function which is uh, generators dot to pretty takes an argument takes a second argument to to print uh, like this uh, no, it actually doesn't use. Ah, well, it uses it underneath, but does some filtering on it. Um, I think. I think by default it just prints, tries to print infinitely many things. Uh, I believe there's a function in here, trace sec n. Yeah, never mind. Just use trace sec n. Um, there's no the 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 kind of limiting of recursion isn't implemented outside right now. Um, I did actually have PR that added the recursion depth limiting to, to pretty. Um, but yeah, so trace sec n if you need to print a deep value. Um, if it's only a small one, you might want to use generators dot to pretty. Um, generators dot to pretty. That adds new lines by default. So we might have a dot b dot c equals 10. Um, like this. Oh. Yeah, of course, it returns a string, so you can also reuse that. But uh, so we have the string here. Let's print this string built-ins dot trace string and null. Sure. So in a in when you print it, it looks pretty good. But um, you can add that very easily to the other one as well. <coughs> to the other one? Like we just have to wrap everything into pretty that is before it's straight. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Right, the, the trace sec, yeah, really here we could also do, so underneath it uses, I mean, maybe we can take a quick look at these built-ins, kind of to take a background look. Uh, these are really present in most purely functional languages, as far as I can know, um, because by default, if we had like some, some really, I don't know, some, some value here and we want to evaluate it, uh, by default it doesn't do the evaluation. So, uh, well, other example, let's do x equals throw an empty string in null. And so this doesn't throw because, of course, x is never used. Uh, but if we have some, some like, sometimes, not often, but sometimes it's useful to still evaluate the value. And we can do this with built-ins.sec. So sec takes two arguments. The first one, it just evaluates. Uh, and then it evaluates the second one as well, but also returns the second one. So the, the evaluation result of the first value is just discarded, essentially. So if you do that... Um, add to the <laughs> yeah, right, I printed an empty string. That's <laughs> error. So yeah, oh, it's actually interesting. It doesn't even print an error here. Um, that looks like a bug. <laughs> <laughs> So, so we have that, um, but then let's say we have like a deeper value here. We have, let's say we have like an a equals throw. Um, you try to sec that, and it doesn't throw an error again. In this case, you can use deep sec. Deep sec. That does the whole recursion thing and uh, does the sec like that. Um, there is, however, if you have some really like performance critical next evaluation code, which really doesn't happen a lot, but uh, you shouldn't use deep sec too much because it always does the full recursion into the entire structure. And that if you have big structures that can get expensive. And uh, sometimes there it's, it's more useful to use built in stuff sec in, in like very limited ways. Um, so the, the set just uh, evaluate the first layer or? Yeah. Yep, evaluate the first argument and then I'll uh, honestly, let, let's take a look at the implementation. Even it's it's when not the first layer is very dependent on which uh, value you're wrapping a list or if it's an active set. Yeah, so, so it is not fully lazy. It's just lazy and mostly lazy. Like for example, lists always uh, have to know their length because they are just vectors internally. So yeah, yeah. And, uh, attribute uh, sets always have to evaluate all of their keys. So whenever you when you like sec an attribute set, it will evaluate all the keys. Even you know you can have like complex keys that are like created from other things. Yeah. Like the name of a key can be like interpolated from like other things. Yeah. And it always has to fully force the whole string of the name. 
So yeah. I so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but let's let's take a look, quick look at that as well. Um, <laughs> but the the implementation here of built-in uh, .sec uh, is right here, and we can see it uses the force value on the first argument, the zeroth element of the array. Then it does the same for the second one, uh, and then it returns the second one. The the v is just the return argument here, uh, and so yeah, we can see the the value of the first argument isn't really used anywhere. Um, the force value is also just this kind of shallow forcing of values. So it forces only, we saw it forces the throw, but it doesn't force it if it's in an attribute set value nested. Um, but yeah, this, this evaluating of, uh, of uh, attribute keys and, and list sizes, that's sometimes a problem uh, because let's say you have some really, uh, some expensive well, packages. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same thought there packages and you want to add some some element here let's say foo bar equals 10 and now well, let's just evaluate foo bar like we don't care about anything else uh, oh I didn't import packages uh, next packages next repl okay well, honestly we can't really see it that well here because it's so fast still uh, but it actually did like, like for example if you dot hello and like put like a throw inside the foobar key value like uh, yeah 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 so okay yeah so right attribute names can also be dynamic uh, as you mentioned so honestly if we do this so uh, it's honestly it's super weird <laughs> if we do just this uh, foo it's not dynamic uh, it's an implementation detail, but it also it's sometimes a problem. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyways, let's ignore this for now. Let's just have like a throw in here. So throw foo and dot hello, yeah. So honestly, we we d we wouldn't care about this this value here. Uh, honestly, no, no matter what. Honestly, no, we we could care about this. Let's flip this around because it could override something from from packages. But this way it can't. So we just have first attribute set with some key we don't really know. Let's just try this ourselves. Uh, yeah, this already throws here. But if we, I shouldn't have deleted that. Packages dot hello. It also throws, even though we know that packages does contain a hello. It wouldn't need to evaluate the left hand side, but it does anyways. So it needs to. It evaluates all the all the names of the attributes before it even yeah. starts evaluation. If it was on the right side, it could like be that this results in hello, and then it would override the left. Yeah, side, yeah. If there was like a hello here and flipped around, yeah, it could override it. Yes. Um, and same for same for arrays. So if we have a uh, a uh, let's pick like one, two, three, and then add a throw high. And then, uh, because next doesn't have an array access syntax, we need to use built in dot element. I think it. I always mess up the order, but oh I think yeah, it's this way around. Really? Uh, well, no, it, it worked, but yeah. So this normal array access, but now we add a throw. Uh, we in Haskell this would work uh, because Haskell has like this cons list laziness. Uh, but in this case, lists are really arrays. Nix needs to figure out the array size before it can evalu evaluate any of the of the values. Yeah, but if you put the right thing throw into a list, it works again. If you, oh yeah, if yeah. You have like a so if we had this here, throw high, then it works because, uh, I mean, if we, if we were just to evaluate this, we can see, oh, actually, the next REPL is a bit weird here. Let's uh, copy it this. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense, uh, but let's let's do it here just to show that actually it's it's lazy if you do it actually. Um, and even if, even like the sec, so built-ins.sec, um, null. The sex to list, so. that, that also works. It, it doesn't throw just from an element unless you access this, of course. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe you should add sec n. No, that's too bad. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, there's there some there's some room for improvement That's there. Kind of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. All right, we we are we're just out of time, but yeah, I think that worked pretty well. Thanks for for attending. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Mm. <laughs>